and uh, welcome. This is the uh, seventh Google Plus Hangout on behalf of the National Art Education. Hello. Um, so thank you. I started a little prematurely here. So this is our seventh Google Plus uh, Hangout on air on behalf of the National Art Education Asso Educators Association Museum Education Division. So this is a forum um, through Google Plus and Hangouts on air where art museum educators and various audiences and communities that we work with can come together and share ideas. And uh, today we're focusing on teens and different teen programming. And we have representatives from three different museums from the West Coast, Midwest, as well as the East Coast. If you are new to Google Plus Hangouts, we have the Q&A app available. So as you're watching this, you can type in questions or make comments as we go along. For today's format, we're going to have teenagers from each of the three museums uh, give a brief introduction to their program as well as the city or community um, that they're working with. And then they have already prepared questions. Um, so instead of it being art museum educators talking peer to peer, we're having teenagers speaking peer to peer today, um, asking each other questions. And then we'll open up the last 20 minutes of the hour-long segment for, question, for questions from, from all of you in the audience. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the Seattle Art Museum. And away we go. All right, thank you. Um, uh, I'm Sarah Bloom. I manage uh, the team program at Seattle Art Museum. And I'll let Maddie here introduce herself. Hi, I'm Maddie Thomas. I was involved with Sam's teen program called Teen Art Group, or TAG, for three years in high school. I'm now an alum and a college freshman at the University of Washington. Um, but I had a really great involvement with TAG over my three years of high school. Basically, it's a program that allows teens to volunteer at all different types of events at Sam. But TAG's main focus is to help curate this biannual event called Teen Night Out. And Teen Night Out usually correlates with um, the opening of a new exhibit at SAM. It's a really cool, fun event. It's free. There's always um, live performers, dancers, artists, art activities, whatever else seems fit to um, help the event and attract <laughs> teens to the museum. Um, and yeah, tag teens have the opportunity to basically curate that event. Tours. Oh, and they also um, give tours at Teen Night Out to teens and the public that comes to the event. And yeah, mm -hmm. is there anything else about that? Um, yeah, and I mean the program is uh, basically uh, the all through the year, fall to June. In the fall, there's usually a leadership component to the teens who are returning from the year previous. So. Um, okay. Matt had been involved for three years and spent a lot of time mentoring two new teens as they they came through um, every year. And then in the spring, we would actually accept a new cohort into the teen arts group that is basically interviewed by the existing group. And so it's very much teen. The entire program is very much teen driven and teen led, and and um, from beginning to end. Um, and that's sort of evolved through through the years as the program has grown. It's about six years old now. OK. Great. Thank you very much. And um, just really quickly, how many teens do you typically have per year? Um, the fall alumni, they call it the alumni group just because they're experienced tag teens, is smaller. I think when I was a part of it, it was between 11 and 15 people. And the, the larger group in the spring is between 25 and 30 people. The upcoming group, I think, is 29. OK. Great. Thank you. And just really quickly, before I turn it over to Milwaukee in the Midwest, um, I see we have a lot of uh, quite a few viewers right now. So thank you if you've joined us since we started. And welcome to the Google Plus. Google Plus Hangout about uh, teens and museums. Please remember you can um, submit questions that we can discuss um, as we go along. And the, the teens and the museum educators will be happy to answer them. And also, just uh, to quickly put it out there, we have this lovely PowerPoint that we were trying to share with all of you today. And we're having technical difficulties. But I will post the link to it afterwards. You can see those various questions and awesome pictures that the teens found um, about the towns that they're representing as well. So I will turn it back over to Milwaukee. 
Great. So hi, everyone. I'm Chelsea Kelly. I'm the manager of digital learning here at the Milwaukee Art Museum. And I'm now going to turn it over to Stephen and Alyssa. Stephen, do you want to start? Hi, everybody. My name is Stephen. I'm here at the Long American Peace Academy. And I am the alum for three different programs here at the Milwaukee Art Museum. I've done the high school summer internship, satellite internship, and the uh, art internship. Um, my name is Alyssa. I'm 16. I go to Zipcon and Antigua, and I've only been here for a semester, and I'm And so, since I've done three different programs, I've also done the satellite program, in which my colleague Alyssa is doing right now. But I'm going to talk about the two other programs that I've been doing, that I've done. The first one was the high school summer internship program, where 16 teens from the Milwaukee area get to come together for five weeks, and we get to learn about the art history at the Milwaukee Art Museum, the culture in the Milwaukee Art Museum, and the careers offered here at this um, museum, too. So I thought it was really interesting learning the different careers that they have at the museum, the different careers that they have here. And one of the projects that we worked on was called the Docent Project. And we got this project, it consisted of teen, the teen students and also the docents having conversations about how to enhance um, docent, the docent and viewer experience. And so I thought it was really interesting because we got to talk about topics of technology within the museum, talking about the generation ga gaps within the museum. So I thought that was really interesting. And for the my other program that I did was Art Express. It was um, it's a program where it's in the, it's another summer program where 16 teenagers come from the Milwaukee area to do a creative response to the featuring uh, the featuring exhibit that we have here. And the exhibit that we have we had here last summer was called 30 Americans, and it highlighted the journey and the story of the African American culture within our country. And so our creative response to that was we wanted to we wanted to combine the whole the Milwaukee together as we're, regardless of our backgrounds, we wanted to um, we wanted excuse me I'm really nervous uh, wanted, we're doing wanted to um, create a cohesive Milwaukee and we wanted to create regardless of our backgrounds and our cultures we wanted to create one Milwaukee and so for the past summer that my I worked on my colleagues they worked on we worked on the art piece and um, do we have it in the slide too. Uh, we can make sure it's inside. Okay. We'll make sure it's inside. But um, what we did was we did a piece called One Milwaukee, and it highlighted the different cultures and parts of Milwaukee to unite Milwaukee as one. And where is it displayed? And it's just, oh, thank you for that. And it's displayed on a Milwaukee city bus, and it will be it will be on that city bus on the side of the city bus for oh. the next couple of months until April, I believe. That's when it's going to be taken out. Do you want to quickly talk about satellite? Okay, so um, I'm in the satellite program, and basically what we do is um, we study a piece of art for like two semesters, and we basically put videos on our reflection of the piece, which is like nice objects, and those are really helpful because they, they teach us to think things about art. So yeah, it's really fun to come together. <laughs> Great, fantastic. Thank you so much. So then I'm gonna we're gonna go to East Coast in Boston. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name is Gabrielle Wyrick and I'm the Associate Director of Education here at the ICA. And also um, that means that I oversee youth programs, teen programs, and also the, the national community. Right. My name is <laughs> I go by the name Academy. I'm in the Council. I'm in the I'm in the Project. And I'm Alyssa Hamilton. I'm also in the Milwaukee Art Museum. And I'm Alyssa Hamilton. I'm also in the Milwaukee Art Museum. I'm Cecilia. I'm a sophomore at Cambridge Ringin Latin School. I am 16 years old and I'm a member of the Teen Arts Council and also on the Matthew Ritchie Project. Um, I guess I'll talk about the Teen Arts Council and talk about Best Words. Yeah. So um, what we do on the Teen Arts Council is um, we plan four teen events per year um, that are based off an exhibit that we have in the gallery. And it's an event to um, get and gather youth from the Boston area to come to the museum and to really experience the arts in ways that they haven't before, but also to yeah, mostly just like get involved with the um, contemporary art museum. 
and what we have is live performances. We also give tours. We have interactive um, activities, sometimes in the galleries, but mostly on the first floor we have an art lab where we do various art projects depending on what the current exhibit is in the galleries. I'm like having trouble elaborating. Um, and there's 15 of us currently, I think. And um, other things we do is we also interview artists that are in the galleries. So the most recent artist we interviewed was Ruby Latoya Fraser. Latoya Ruby, Ruby Fraser, always. Um, and she's a photographer who's really, really interesting. She's from Pennsylvania. Uh, okay, uh, I'm part of Fast Forward, and what Fast Forward is, uh, in what Fast Forward is, is a year-long um, film project, and there's two groups of the Thursday class and the Friday class, the Thursday class is for the people who are at the school, they this is their first time with art, not with um, film, or they have had experience with it, but not that confident in their ability, and so the Friday is for people who are Thursday class, or have made films before, and I'm coming for uh, my second year. Um, usually, what we do is for the first half of the year, we'll focus on an audio project. Um, an audio project will be a response. will be in response to something inside the gallery. So, like, say this in the gallery, someone's like, I want to something about this. Can you know, they make an audio assessment that will you know, give, us, give them a chance to come out here? And it also gives them a chance to um, learn how to perfect their audio performance. And then later on, we get to pitch our audio, our audio pieces, and then our film pieces. And that's pretty much it. And then we, uh, then we have a film night where our, where our films get to show. OK. Great. So thank you, everyone, for the overview of your programs. And uh, just a quick update. We're having some technical difficulties with screen sharing the PowerPoint that we prepared. But I just added the Google Drive shared uh, document link to, the, um, to our Google Plus page right below this broadcast. So if you click on that, you should be able to access the um, questions and as well as images that the teens prepared. And I totally forgot to introduce myself, but I'm Michelle Groey. I'm a member of the NAEA Development Committee uh, for the Museum Education Division. And we're really delighted, as I said at the beginning, to have all of these uh, teens here uh, to share their perspectives, both from the program and in uh, Maddie's case as an alum of the program. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Chelsea Kelly, who will just run us through some of the overarching questions that we have so far for our teams today. Sure. So um, one of the first questions that we came up with as a group that maybe we can all talk about um, is uh, one of the, the issues surrounding teen programs, and that's how do you get other teens to be motivated to come to our museum? So um, maybe one of the other museums wants to take a stab and we can kind of turn that into a conversation and get started. <laughs> oh, we'll start. Um, I think one of the main things we like to do as Teen Arts Council members is, since we're all in high school, we use all of our high school abilities to really gather the fact, like rally the forces. And um, so some, actually one of our Teen Arts Council members is a president of his high school. So he gets to make announcements and stuff. And really, any, most a lot of teens have access to principal's office somehow and can make announcements <laughs> about the teen nights for their school. We also like to pass out um, postcards that a teen arts council member will design. This is one of them that's for the most recent one. Um, it's based off of this artist, Nick Cave, who's really <laughs> cool with, like costumes and stuff. And um, other things we do. Just we invite like every single youth program in the Boston area to the teen night so that literally no like if you're in a youth program somewhere in Boston you've probably heard of the teen night somehow. Um, That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and anything we can do, we do it <laughs> to reach teens. Yeah. On to Seattle. <laughs> I think we're for the most part on the same page as Boston with how we promote, we use um, everyone who's in TAG to kind of be a liaison to their high school and a lot of it is word of mouth and um, teens in the program 
having conversations with their friends about it and trying to advertise it that way. But we also always produce large posters. There's probably one in this room. Um, we produce big posters um, about Teen Night Out that teens in the program distribute to their high schools and are encouraged to put in coffee shops and any other kind of place in the area where teens could see it. Um, we have a Facebook page where our social media is still a little up and coming. We're going to try to ramp up our Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. But um, we do have a Facebook page, and everyone in TAG is encouraged to invite people to the event through that. This is one of our probably kind of hard to see. It's one of our posters from United Out. Yeah, yeah, and um, oftentimes the teens in the program get some say in what the poster design actually looks like, which has been really cool. But for the most part, I think we're on the same page as Boston. We try to incorporate other youth groups in the area. Um, the Experience Music Project, or the EMP Music Museum in Seattle, has a very similar style youth group. And they often volunteer at our events, and we can volunteer at theirs. So I think we're mo mostly on the same page. Do you guys want to speak to that? Yeah, I can say some stuff too. So for our the museum here at the Milwaukee Museum, we have these events once a month called NAM After Dark, and it's open to the public. And when the Dark Museum opens up late, they have the, and it's a night where they have themes in it. We can have some nights they have pajama jams, they have salsa, they have all these different themes. And so it opens the public to come to the museum and spend the night. Well, not the whole night there, but really play till what twelve o'clock? Uh, about midnight. Midnight, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I promote the art museum to the team in my uh, community is, you know, you know, there's this event called the uh, Nam After Dark Movie to come over and my the my friends say they, they're really intrigued with these programs that they have here. And I think these little events that they have here at the art museum it really does bring in the community. And also like how you said, I think these internships and these programs for the teams, dedicated for the teens, is a great way to uh, promote and have the teens be uh, a part of the art museum, uh, a part of the art museum culture too, and having their voice within the museums and in the big picture museums, and in the big picture of the museums too. And so I think having this program is a wonderful thing for teenagers to be a part of. I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> um, I've only been in the art museum for this one time, so I've never really been here besides for this program. And I learned about it through my school, and my art teacher was like, you have to do it. You have to. So I was like, OK. <laughs> Thank goodness for art teachers. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> do you guys want to, uh, Seattle or Boston, do you guys want to throw a question out there? Mm -hmm. um, I'm Go for Mark's. Wait, um, oh, do you guys interact with um, the artists that are in your community or in your museums, like currently exhibiting at all? Because that's something that we really like to do. Like, we want to hear more about other teams doing that. Yeah, um, I definitely think, I mean, I'm not a part of TAG anymore, but when I was a part of it, I think they're could have been more opportunities to interact with the artists, but there was definitely some very cool ones. Um, my first year that I was involved with TAG, Nick Cave was at SAM, which is really cool. Um, and he came to SAM, I think, the week before his show opened, and three days before his show was open to the public, we had the opportunity to meet him, and he toured us around his exhibit, and it was so amazing. That was, I think, one of my favorite experiences overall through TAG because um, not only do you get to meet Nick Cave, this ama amazing artist, and see his idea come to life through his eyes, but I thought it was really cool to see the exhibit in its raw form with like wet paint signs still around the walls and plastic still needing to be taken off. So there are, are opportunities like that, and we do have chances to meet other curators and other artists that are involved with the museum too. But um, that was one of my most memorable experiences with that. Okay. I, um, well, in my program, we, we don't really uh, get to meet the artists, but we study the artists. So we get a feeling of what and why they made their piece. And so we get to um, go deeper into actually why the piece was made and not exactly why it's just pretty or pretty somebody. So we really just learn about them. But we also do um, 
we took like little <laughs> mini field trips around the art museum, so we get to learn about the different jobs and like um, the different possibilities you can take if you study art. So I like that part of that program. And from my experience at the Milwaukee Art Museum, um, as I told you about the Art Express program I was part of, the Interest of Art Express was a part, I uh, worked alongside with the art studio called Redline, and it's an art studio where the students from the Art Museum got to work over their projects. And so we got to meet the faculty and the staff at Redline, and we got to work with them, and they made a new art Xerox, uh, an artwork onto a big piece of paper, so I thought that was really interesting too. But also with my experience in satellite too, we were able to talk to um, some. We well, we were able to talk to uh, one of the animators for Pixar. I believe his name was Dan Holland. So he had this wonderful uh, presentation, and he got to meet with the teams in the program too. And I thought that was just the highlight of the satellite program was meeting uh, an animator from Pixar. Awesome. Maybe you guys want to ask a question? Okay. Um. So, like, what opportunities in your city like bring you to the art museum? Like, what is what opportunities do you have as an art? Uh, well, we kind of struggled with this question a little bit because <laughs> Boston is. Just like, uh, how'd you say it? Uh, we were calling it a uh, smaller New York, but kind of like on the Arctic Tundra because it's really cold right now. <laughs> and then we looked at the weather and we compared us to Milwaukee, and you guys are colder than we are right now. So we were like, oh, I guess that doesn't really work. <laughs> um, yeah, we came here in 40 degree weather today, so kudos for <laughs> that. Hey, it's summer in Seattle, right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what makes it, some of the things that make it unique is, I guess, the location in general is um, on the waterfront, and I guess we're like right in Boston, off the Boston Harbor, which is kind of our main selling point. And uh, like it, when you come, when people come to Boston, so it's like kind of a thing when new people who are just moving to Boston they like want to see the waterfront. So that's like I feel like that's how a lot of teams find out about the SA. and also just stumbling upon it by like being curious about uh, what's around the city. Yeah, also the area that the ICA in is kind of up and coming, not so much for like areas that teens hang out in because it's kind of off the beaten path, but um, in general it's really, um, uh, I guess there's a lot of like technology developing in this area. There's some like new open source like meeting gathering space across the street from us. So it's just a really developing area, which is interesting because we are a contemporary art museum that's on the forefront of art and it's kind of cool to be in the forefront of this like future of Boston almost. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um Seattle the Seattle Art Museum is also near the waterfront. Um, we're really close to this market called Pike Place Market, which um, is a big tourist attraction in Seattle. Lots of people going in and out. It's only a few blocks away from Sam. Um, I had another train of thought about <coughs> that that is gone now. Um, yeah, we can talk also about the fact that we have the three locations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sam's actually made up of three different locations. The largest one where I am right now is Sam downtown. But we also have the Olympic Sculpture Park, which is this open sculpture park, exactly what it sounds like, um, <laughs> right by the waterfront and the aquarium. Um, it's a really beautiful place. And then we have the Seattle Asian Art Museum, which is in a neighborhood called Capitol Hill. Um, pretty vibrant, colorful neighborhood, um, so. And that's a cool area. That, yeah. That's where a lot of teens actually, Yeah. that's sort of the hangout area. So um, so we actually sometimes have it, that challenge of, the teens like to hang out in Capitol Hill where that, the Asian Art Museum is, but a lot of our stuff is happening downtown. Um, and I don't know if Maddie can speak to like whether teens come, you know, like what brings teens downtown to downtown Seattle, or if they do come to downtown Seattle. Um, I, I mean, I think it's just interesting that you can get a poll in different audiences from all three locations. 
Um, it's pretty easy to bus anywhere downtown in Seattle. Um, Sam is also near a various amount of concert venues, which can be an attraction mm -hmm. for teens. And we've done some marketing, like in terms of getting the word out about team programs yeah. after concerts and things like that. We're actually also down the street from a, um, what do we call it? The pavilion. We're down the street from the pavilion, so that's where a lot of concerts happen. And also, we're not that far from our own. It's like a shot out there. Yeah. Um, it's easy. <laughs> If you know where that is, it's easy to get here, but other than that, Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, so, Bob, I'm going to ask you a question. Oh. I got it. I was going to ask how they actually like, found out about the program again. You <laughs> can just jump in. I can ask a question. If um, I was wondering how everyone found out about the teen programs that exist at your museum. I know Alyssa was saying that she found out through her art teacher, but how did everyone else find out about these programs and get involved with it and apply for them and stuff like that? Nice question. Mm -hmm. The first time I found that building of the ICA was on accident. <laughs> we went to the aquarium, which is like kind of like right across the Water and um, we were just like it was like after we came from the aquarium we were walking along the water and there was a group of people sitting in a circle outside on the little green area and I went up to them and I started talking to them and I was asking them questions and then I found out that this was this thing and I was like hmm that sounds familiar and uh, Tiff in my school um, later on told me that that's where that. The I see the same I see he was talking about. And I was like, that's 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 <laughs> Um. So the way I found out about the I see is, I guess I've been coming here since I was like pretty young because my mom's friend, like one of the like people who's like really like involved with it somehow, and then also they're like. Another family friend that they, my mom knows and her friend knows was in um, the Fast Forwards program, so he told me about the Teen Arts Council, and I applied, but he was like, oh, if you don't get into the Teen Arts Council, just apply to Fast Forward. You're going to get into something. <laughs> it's just very, like, if, if I feel like at the ICA, if you're, like, into the idea of being part of something, you can do it if you have a passion. That's cool. Yeah. And so for my story, similar like my friend Alyssa's her story, uh, my art teacher actually came up with the um, came to me and said that this program here at the art museum, if you're not doing anything for the summer, you should do it too. And actually, I was out of the country for six weeks of the summer too, so I, w I didn't know for sure if I wanted to do this. But I applied before going out of the country, and my mom called me halfway when I was in Thailand. And she said that I got the internship for the Milwaukee Art Museum, and I was so happy. And so when I came back, about three days later, I had to go to work, and I had to go to the Art Museum. But it was all worth it because I had I met Chelsea, and I had met so many students in this program, and it was great. That's the best that I did, never made. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the Teen Arts Council. For their fall teen night out, and I didn't actually go to that teen night out um, for various reasons. But then later that year, I was looking at Sam's website to see when the next teen night out was, or if there was any other cool teen events happening. And I saw um, a section on the website about tag, and thought it looked interesting, and applied for it over the summer. And then a couple months later, got an email back about it, and went through a group interview and an individual interview the fall of my sophomore year and then was accepted to the program and kept applying every year and finished and was through it the rest of my high school experience. Oh, I have a question. Do you, you have to keep reapplying to your teen programs or is it like once you're in or continuously in like um, your It kind of varies and I think that's changing a little bit this year if I'm not mistaken. Um, I never really had to reapply per se. 
I was also part of the alumni group in the fall. So then I was kind of automatically in for spring and helped interview and choose people that were a part of the spring program. But I think that is changing a little bit. Maybe Sarah could speak to that. Yeah, um, we've just had, you know, our group, the group actually is up to 30, but typically it was under 25. And um, so as it grew, we kind of had to rethink um, the the sort of system of being grandfathered in if they come back in the fall. Um, the fall program, um, the three months in the fall are really geared towards leadership. So we don't ask teens to reapply to them. We don't take new teens in. We just ask the ones who want to return to really come back and produce a teen night out, but really kind of delve deeper into issues of like, you know, and not just leadership, but like issues around social justice and volunteering and things like that. Um, but um, but we we have two. We're developing two sets of applications for returning teens in the spring, and then for teens who want to apply again, just to kind of have a bit more of a level playing field for everyone, but also to kind of um, scaffold some commitment so the returning teens would sort of commit to mentoring the teens coming for the first time and really kind of do a little bit more um, leadership, uh, not just development, but really uh, skill development for the incoming teens. Um, so it's sort of continuing to be a, 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 a a work in progress where some years they've applied, some years they've kind of come through and just stayed through. Um, but this year we're having everybody reapply. So. Um, I, I have a quick question. Um, is what kind of, like, in terms of just the commitment to the different programs that, um, that you know, the teens in the different cities are, are part of, if you can speak to that in terms of just, like, you know, other things you're involved in, but also like how much time do you spend at the museum, um, whether through the programs or, you know, hanging out or, um, you know, and, and in terms of our program, we can sort of cover that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm pretty much here every day now because I, I started an internship, so now I'm here like Monday through Friday, and I'm also here about the Monday through Friday project happens, which is like every one to like a month, and then Fast forward to keeping here on Friday, uh, and on Fridays, and the Teen Arts Council meets on Thursday. So I'm pretty much here every day, and um, I'm <laughs> happy with it. <laughs> I'm happy with it, and uh, I kind of like it because there's always a good opportunity to dish out ideas and um, express myself easily with with. Uh, with and I'm just going to interject uh, a second to say that. Uh, Everyone. Um, the, the ICA works with about 7,000 teens a year on various um, spectrums of programming. So Cecilia and Aaron are part of our two most extended programs, which is why they're here pretty much every day. So we do have a whole range of programs that are very much like low commitment, one-off, social experiences to shorter term workshops to different collectives and interest groups. Uh, and it really runs the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, oh yeah. So the Teen Arts Council, it, it's not only just Thursdays. Like for instance, this whatever this is, <laughs> <laughs> also um, is uh, a thing that if depending on the role you get chosen for in the Teen Night, whether that is um, designing the Teen Postcard or being the performance manager. Uh, various roles you have to sometimes do work outside of um, the Institute of Contemporary Art to really um, help make the Teen Night as good as possible, as best as possible. <laughs> Grammar. Um, so, for instance, when I was designing the postcard, I spent like uh, like three like hours outside of the Teen Arts Council, like drawing it. But it's it it just really varies on the different programs and the level of responsibility that you feel comfortable taking um, with whatever you're go is going on in your outside life. Um, so for me, I am like a very busy person. Um, like every other week I have something scheduled after school. I'm in college possible, National Honor Society, yearbook. Um, I also have a job. And Thursday is my free day. Like I tell everybody, I'm going to the arts Thursday, but <laughs> anything else on Thursday. So Thursday is my only day to and sometimes Chelsea gives us homework. Um, we usually have 
Well, we usually do all our homework at the art museum, but sometimes we have like extra homework that we need to do, like questions that we need to answer or think about for our art museum. So, committing to the art museum is something that it's like a must because I just love art and it's my outlet. So, yeah. Yeah, and also like how she said on Thursdays was the day where we do our internships. We meet once a week. The program that I was in, it was a 13-week program, a 13-week long program, and it, we met once a week on Thursdays. And I really liked that because it was a long, it was a whole semester long, and I was able to come to the museum, a place where I love once a week, and it was wonderful. Beyond that, I was well. Once the internship was done, I wasn't able to come to the museum as much as I wanted to because I was so busy applying to colleges, finishing up other pro other activities that I was doing. So it was that that the fact that I wasn't able to come to the museum. But like I said, the internship was great, and it brings students from different walks of life to the museum at least once a week, and we get to share our stories as an upcoming artist or as a rising artist or as just students in general, and you get to see different, the whole spectrum of students in Milwaukee, and that's what I really like to love. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, I agree with Steven, and I'm on a similar page. Um, TAG itself is a once a week commitment. Um, sometimes it's Wednesday, sometimes it's Thursdays, it's ranged year to year. Um, but it's a once a week commitment. You meet for about two, two and a half hours. Um, <clears throat> but it's not just about coming to a place once a week. Like You really have to be engaged and committed and continuously adding to the dynamic of the group. Um, and if you're not there at meetings and stuff, that can definitely change things and um, cause troubles, especially when it gets closer to the actual teen night out. If um, people in a certain committee aren't there that can really change the dynamic, but for the most part it's a once a week commitment. Um, if there is a event on a Saturday or something, tag members are usually asked to volunteer at that, such as family festivals or um, other things, so that could be another time commitment. Um, when it gets really close to tonight out and members are starting to contact performers or other um, dance groups or other artists. Sometimes they'll be asked to do that outside of TAG or email someone um, and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's once a week. So I'm going to jump in and maybe let's do one more question and then, and then we'll open it up to the audience questions because I think we have a bunch of really good ones that are actually really similar to the questions that we talked about in advance. But I'm going to throw out something, uh, kind of a general question. What is the role of teen voices and teens' interpretations at museums for everybody? <laughs> hey, Milwaukee, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. Do you guys want to go first? Ladies <laughs> first. Um, okay, so I can speak on that question. Um, what is the role of teen voices within the art museum? Well, I think in our teen voices we might not be as out there as what we would like to be, but I think in certain small aspects, our voices are heard. Um, I remember when there was an exhibit, uh, our future exhibit this past summer called Study Americans. Um, people from the community were able to write their thoughts of what they thought about um, the art piece that they saw. And it was a wall just completely dedicated for the people and the viewers to write what they felt about the art piece. And so as a teen and in the program, we were able to write down our thoughts too. And so I thought that that was one form of how teens were able to uh, write down their voices and for the, for the art museum. Um, yeah, like Steven said, our voices are kind of small in the museum, but um, during our time in the uh, program, we get to express ourselves and what we think about the pieces, and then as a group, we collectively think about these pieces. And I'm a very really shy person, so during these little album studies, I was shy talking in front of everybody, but like you soon realize that um, talking about stuff is easier when it's in a group and like you get to see and learn what other people think so it opens up um, your horizon more so you think about every aspect of anything so yeah I like it. So I help them be louder. <laughs> yeah so uh, one great example at the ICA of uh, a way that our voices are directly kind of heard at the museum is 
um, at the beginning of each like year at, for like the two teen programs task board and the teen arts council, um, we do these um, group audio projects where fast board members and teen arts council members each choose a piece of work from the permanent exhibit, whichever one is up right now. We have something to do with like pushing the boundaries of painting. And so we each choose a piece, and um, based off the piece, you're put in a group with people who chose either the same piece or similar pieces, and you create an audio project that um, each member works on. Fast Forward ultimately does all of the editing, and I think a lot of the, more of the recording, um, to create this piece that is essentially our voice in more of an artistic form. It's like a direct out, like output of our thoughts and our like created feelings towards a piece that um, I think viewers and visitors at the museum can ultimately hear at the end. Like you can call up a phone number and um, like be looking at a piece and like hearing the audio piece that goes with it. So I think that's a really cool creative endeavor. Yeah. And also we get to, we, a lot of time we get to work directly with um, some of the regular museum staff. Um, this happens on opportunities where, um, so for example, uh, I. Recently, I talked to a guy here named Mike Cohen. He's a really good friend of mine. He's sheet back emails, and um, he's very an interesting fellow. And um, I don't know, he's a very welcome to by the so like we get to really work our opinion and um, get what we think should be done for whatever task we're deciding. Also, teens are. Um, like one of the main audiences at the ICA. So pretty much the reason that we have teen programs that encompass 7,000 teens over the course of like one year is because we really focus on trying to bring teens into the museum and hearing what teens have to say about art and their feelings about art and um, really taking those experiences and putting them into all of the efforts and endeavors that are in, uh, like encompassed in the teen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree with that, Cecilia, and think that that's applicable um, at SAM too. I, um, for me, I felt that being a teen and being a volunteer at SAM, I was more valued here than any other program that I was a part of throughout high school. Um, the staff here is so personal and really gives you multiple opportunities to grow as a leader, to grow in a group environment. Um, and I always felt like it was a really good balance of something creative, but also something that kind of pushes you um, professionally and helps build your education and stuff like that. Um, I would say that the biggest avenues for teen involvement are tag attending Teen Night Out just as um, a general teen of the public um, through tours and then teen workshops here too. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That was, a, that was a tough question I threw at you at the end there. So actually, I think I'm going to ask Sal if you could help us out with moderating the audience questions, because I'm a little far away from our computer. Um, so if you can dive in, that would be really great. Do you mind? Yeah, no, no problem. So um, I think some of, um, I know like Maddie was kind of addressing a little bit of this question, but what makes your experience in your teen program fulfilling for you with so many directions that teens are pulled in these days? What makes you committed to your museums and its teen program? Um, I'll go first. Um, because I'm so busy, I don't really have a way to express myself. My school is transitioning into an IB school, so they're like really like making us hit the books hard. So um, it's like really stressful when you have school and you have a job, and then you have all these extracurricular activities. And having the art museum as the outlet, um, it makes it makes it more easier to commit because it's something I actually look forward to doing and being in. And yeah, it's it just it's just my outlet. So I love it. And I think that these programs, these team programs, dedicated just for the teens, I think it's really important for students to be a part of because it's, it gives them the opportunity to put themselves in a place where they're not they're not used they're not used to. I know at my school we don't have a lot of teen art programs too, um, and so I am so glad that we have these programs because teens have opportunities to get themselves within the community, and it shows them the bigger pers perspective of what what is around 
what is happening in their city. And I think that this program is great. And I think all programs in general for teens in, in, the, in the museum is a great thing. Uh, well, for me, um, I think it's so that uh, I almost, I'm not very, I wasn't very um, successful in school and stuff, but like here I kind of excelled and I've managed to um, accomplish a lot of great things and I've been given a lot of great opportunities, so that's kind of filling. Also, I feel like one of the reasons that a lot of our teens are so committed to the programs is once you're involved in a long-term program, you it's a fairly rigorous process to apply. You have to fill out an application and go through an interview. So you once you get in, you like really want it. Like it's it's not you, you don't like really like get into a teen program with just being like, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, like impartial being impartial about like whatever is going on, the contemporary arts idea of whatever in Boston isn't really something that is common. Everyone's like really passionate, I feel like. Um, and the Teen Arts Council and Fast Forward. Cool. And Maddie, anything else you want to add? Yeah, I was going to say that for me, um, after going through the program for three years and now being in college, when I first um, started the program, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. And it's not like I've everything figured out right now by any means, but I've always been interested in art growing up, but never really had a way to channel that other than just drawing in a sketchbook or having it more of as a hobby. Um, but being a part of TAG opened me up to the whole like career world of being in a museum and helping things come together and made me more interested in art history and just gave me a way to channel that creativity in also a professional way which I think was really valuable. <laughs> Most of my college app essays were about TAG or SAM in some way. Um, but, yeah. Great. And that kind of leads us into the, the next question for the teens. And do you think these experiences and programs will drive you to participate in the arts in college, which you started to just talk about? But also, um, if so, what parts of these programs would you like to see there, or how would you want them to be different? So I think if, if, if these could continue. Um, in college? Um, well, I can kind of speak to that a little bit. Right now, um, I'm on a, I'm, I'm on, sorry, I'm in a program called the Student Henry Art Group at the Henry Art Gallery, which is attached to my college. Um, and I'm still kind of trying to get a feel for it and, um, readjust to the dynamic of a different museum, but from what I've seen so far, the impact of SHAG is not as significant as it was um, through the Teen Arts Group at the SAM. We're just kind of there to be other bodies or volunteers at pre-existing events, and so far haven't really had as much of an opportunity to make an impact of what the actual events look like. Um, I would really love to see some kind of student night out or college student night out at the Henry because right now the only existing events there are tailored towards grad students and then one in the very beginning of the year that a lot of people don't know about. Um, I'm still kind of trying to get a feel for what that could be for me in college, but um, aside from that, it's influenced my major, influenced classes that I took last quarter and this quarter, so I don't know if that answers the question enough. But. No, it does, definitely. Um, so what about um, teens that are still in high school? Or is this driving you to participate in arts in college? And if there were programs available for you in college, would you want them to be similar or different? Um, well, as someone who is really excited about pursuing something similar, like, like so Gab's job, who's our boss, is is like a total cool job, like dream job, and I think that's like um, being in the Teen Arts Council has really um, pushed me to want to do like be involved in a museum environment when I'm older. So I think it's gonna make me pursue like an arts path in college and ultimately have a job at a museum because I've been in such a positive environment that works with youth and teens so beautifully that makes me really want to do it. 
pretty much the same. <laughs> but I also wanted to note that um, some of the programs, like such as Fast Forward, um, I know they have a strong alumni program. Like here at the ICA, um, if you graduate Fast Forward, like a lot of the time they end up hiring those alumni to do projects for them. So a lot of them are either they they started in Fast Forward and they've graduated through and then they've finished high school and they're now in college or just now finished college. And they're pretty much very, very well. So I feel like there, are, there will be a lot of programs that we're going to continue doing, um, continue, uh, continue following and working in the museum. Yeah, in fact, I think um, every thing that's produced for the ICA is produced by a fast forward alumni. Yeah, so um, pretty much even once you graduate, um, either any program at the ICA, there's like continuous involvement with alumni, especially fast forward and starting like more with the team ourselves. Like, like. Great. And what about Milwaukee? So for me, um, as I just got done applying for colleges too, and um, how this this program really influenced me too. So I think I'm kind of the oddball. Um, what I want to pursue in college is actually government and political science, kind of the whole opposite of um, art. But I also want to do lots of activities that are with art too. And I think that as a minor, I would love to have art history as a minor too. Because then my, my parents are asking, are you crazy? I'm, how are you going to put art history and government together? And I said, mom, it, it can work, OK? And what I thought to myself is, um, by learning the history and the stories that are told through the art and in history of different times, uh, I can apply that into the law, the law and the government aspect too. Because um, basically, what our what our government and our laws combine of is a community of different stories and different experiences and different pieces of art, and that's why I think that I can match those together. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> Um, like Maddie, for me, art was, um, it was most of a hobby for me, but um, being in the art program, it, it like enhanced my way of thinking, and like Stephen, um, I don't want to take art in college, I want to be an engineer and a businesswoman, but art will definitely always be a part of my life, and eventually I want to open up some um, sort of business related to art, so I will always have art in my life. Can I just say something about um, to Milwaukee Art Museum? Um, there is someone in the Teen Arts Council that also is. is and I feel like I see that a lot as a as a, a dream museum. And there's a lot of people who don't necessarily want to follow careers in the arts, but are still very interested in seeing how it helps them apply for those things. And recently, we um, we, watched, we um, got to witness a talk from. Megan Wilkinson. Megan Wilkinson, and she she's a bit she works for a bank. She um, she thought, thinks it's very interesting how art um, expands uh, the look in it towards business and poli and politics. So I just thought I wanted to make note of that. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I think we have time for two more questions. So one is kind of a practical one for the teens. How important is it to you that you are the ones to design the posters and postcards instead of the museum designing the promotional materials. Um, so I guess I'll talk about that because I was just the one talking about I was the most recent designer of the Teen Arts Council postcard. I think it's if it's for a teen event, I think it's incredibly important. Why are you having like like what when I think of that it brings up the question if you're having an event for teens and it's essentially run by teens, if there is an opportunity for a teen who's interested in art and like pursues it, who loves drawing, who would be like passionate about doing it, why aren't you having them design it? Because I feel like if if there is a teen who feels like they can take the responsibility, they really should. And I think that a lot of times having a postcard designed by teens even puts a more emphasis on the fact that it's an event for teens, done by teens, everything about teens is really reinforced because I feel like there's a difference between the aesthetic of a teen making art versus an adult designer who, even though they might be like really, really talented, doesn't really have that same eye as a teen might. Yeah. And um, Milwaukee or Seattle, does that 
apply to you guys? Um, well, we don't really um, design postcards or anything like that, but in the satellite program, um, we do everything on our iPad. So um, we reflect on our pieces. We each individually pick a piece or a permanent piece in our museum, and we research the artist, we research the piece, and we reflect on it. So in a way, the viewers and the audience on YouTube, whoever watch our video, they get to see what we think, and they get to see why it's important for us to be a part of the art museum. Um, for the Art Express uh, program that I was in, students were able to create. A, it was an, it was a, a, a banner that was for a bus, and the, when we had the bus come in, drive in, I think nothing was. I was I was so happy and so proud of all of us for working so hard in that summer, setting up that, um, making that art camp, and putting up on that bus. Okay. Um, I think it applies to. Sam as well. I'm pretty sure some of the earlier Teen Art Out posters years ago were designed by teens. I have one in my room. Um, but uh, for the most part, it is still Sam's graphic designers. We have a really good graphic design team, but they, a tag always has some kind of input, even if it's voting on their final three posters, which one we like the best. There's always some kind of input and spin that we can, we can put on it. Um, so I think that's important, too. Okay. okay. Great. So thank you, everyone. So well, how about one last question? I think we can squeeze it in here really quickly. So um, a lot of you were talking about the impact that the uh, that the, these programs have on you, but someone was asking, um, Annie was asking, is art making a component of these programs? Um, and is, is that a creative outlet, or is it something else that gives you inspiration? Um, well, the videos we make, um, they help us think um, deeper about what we do so like even in school like I think deeper about what I'm doing or why this was made or why this happened but um, I actually reflect on it because um, for my piece that I'm studying I'm actually trying to make a reaction piece to it in my art class because I have independent studios so I actually can do whatever I want but yeah it, it's like a way to get out um, of all the stress when I come here it's like Oh, art, just art. It's all about art for me when I come here, so I don't think about anything else. And for the satellite program that I was in, too, we didn't, it wasn't based on making art, it was more of observing and observing art. So we had this activity called uh, Objects. And I love that pro I love that uh, activity because once I was done with that program, I was more critical and looking at things that are different way, uh, seeing why is this made that way, why is this supposed to be that way. Uh, the, I was going behind um, what the artist was thinking and going through his thinking. That was really um, a great tip. Do you want to say quickly what an object is? Oh, I'm sorry. An object study is where the student, directed by Chelsea here, we sit around an art piece and we have a conversation about what what techniques were used and why they were used, what messages does it send, and that's uh, what an object study is. And so. Beyond Chelsea directing us with the object studies, when I'm at home, when I'm at school, I do the object study sessions as well. And they're usually for about an hour, the one work. Yeah. Okay, great. How about uh, Maddie? Did you do art making with your program? Yeah. Um, art making definitely was a component of it. I think the biggest component of art making was if um, we were trying to think of an art activity to have at 18 and out event, TAG would test out the activity with one of the um, studio art teachers and see if it flows well, if it makes sense, if it's fun, if it's going to attract people. Um, so I think of actual art making, that was probably the biggest um, component of that, but <clears throat> we also would do um, tours in the galleries so that everyone in TAG has a feel for the exhibit, kind of like the object study, but definitely not as intensive. Um, we'd meet with artists and curators, basically whatever would help enhance the understanding of the exhibit the most so that we could channel that into Teen Night Out, whether that was through tours, through art making, through studying pieces in the history, etc. Okay. Great, and then Boston. Uh, art making isn't technically part of what the TAC does because a lot of people in TR, like I feel like half the people in TRC, TAC are an artist and the other half are like like drawing some stuff creatively. But um, uh, it, uh, 
Um, yeah, so the Teen Arts Council isn't, isn't focused on arts making, though there obviously are arts making components, like when we're either setting up for the, like, whatever art activity we're going to have for a teen night or designing the postcard. So there is that element, but um, the arts programs that we have are, we have like classes like photography or like, um, like we had a class on like how to design your own like graffiti tag or sticker or something. Um, and then there's also obviously passports, which is an intensive video making program. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. So I think we're going to wrap it up just because of in the interest of time. But I'd like to thank all of the teens and all of the art museum educators from West Coast, East Coast, and the awesomeness in the middle of the country for joining us today. And um, it, was, it was an amazing conversation just to hear from uh, the various perspectives and I think gave a lot of us some insights into what teens not only expect but what they enjoy about these different types of programs so thank you so much for for spending time on this Google Hangout and uh, a reminder for those of you who participate as well as view the the Hangouts um, right after this broadcast I'm going to post a link to a survey we'd love to get feedback on this uh, Google Hangout as well as the other six that we did in November and December so far um, if you have an idea about a future Hangout, um, it could be a different format. Uh, if you have specific speakers or a particular topic in mind, please uh, take five to ten minutes to fill out that survey. Um, if the teens have time and they want to fill it out to reflect on that as well. Um, but it would just be great to help us generate some future ideas so we can keep the peer-to-peer -peer conversations going, uh, both for NAEA Museum Education Division members, but also for uh, wider wider span of museum educators, art educators, um, teens, and other audiences that we work with. But thank you again for sharing time with us, and we hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.